Sanyasa Yoga, the Yoga of Knowledge of Renunciation of Action. And here is the essence of the verses 24 and 25, the translation and commentary by Maharshi Ji. Brahma Arpanam, Brahma Havihi, Brahma Gnau, Brahma Nahutam. ब्रह्म एव तेन गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म समाधिना नेक्स्ट दैवम एव अपरे यज्ञम योगिनः परयुपासते ब्रह्मज्ञौ अपरे यज्ञम यज्ञेन एव उपजुह्वते नाउ हियर इज द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन Brahman is the act of offering Brahman the oblation poured by Brahman into fire that is Brahman to Brahman alone must he go who is fixed in Brahman through 
through action. Next, some yogis perform yajna merely by worshipping the gods. Others, by offering the yajna itself into the fire that is Brahman. I will repeat these as we go along. Uh, just let let us review verse number twenty three where we left off. He who is freed from attachment, liberated, whose mind is established in wisdom, who acts for the sake of yajna, his action is entirely dissolved. Again, he who is freed from attachment, liberated, whose mind is established in wisdom, who acts for the sake of yajna, his action is entirely dissolved. Through this verse, Bhagwan demonstrates that when, through constant practice of meditation, if a man has gained cosmic consciousness, and when the pure transcendental consciousness is grounded in the very nature of the mind, then he becomes liberated. He becomes liberated from the field of action and he is also freed from attachment. So being liberated, then every action produces life-supporting influences in creation and thus helps the cosmic creation. And because every action is producing life-supporting influence and helping with the cosmic evolution, therefore it becomes an act of yajna. So now we can say every action is for the sake of yajna. So finally, the actions of one who practices transcendental meditation and experiences the transcendental consciousness are worthy of being ranked as yajna. Now, the four expressions of this verse, they bring out the whole essence of the previous five verses and let us see below. The verse says, He who is freed from attachment, liberated, whose mind is established in wisdom, who acts for the sake of yajna, his action is entirely dissolved. Now let's take the phrase, he who is freed from attachment. So this wise man who, who is freed from attachment He is the one who in the action sees inaction and he whose every undertaking is free from desire. Having cast off attachment to the fruit of action and he is expecting nothing. He is satisfied with whatever comes unasked. Now let, let's to look at the next phrase. He who is freed from attachment, liberated, whose mind is established in wisdom, who acts for the sake of yajna, his action is entirely dissolved. He is liberated. So one who is freed from attachment is liberated and he sees in inaction he sees the action and he whose every undertaking is free from the incentive thereof is ever contented his heart and mind disciplined and he is beyond the pairs of opposites free from envy now let's look at the next phrase whose mind is established in wisdom. Again the verse, let's go back to the verse. 
he who is freed from attachment liberated whose mind is established in wisdom who acts for the sake of yajna his action is entirely dissolved so here the phrase whose mind is established in wisdom he is wise among men he is united and he is one whose action is burnt up in the fire of knowledge he is depending on nothing having he having relinquished all possessions he is balanced in success and failure now the last phrase who acts for the sake of yajna his action is entirely dissolved i read the verse again he who is freed from attachment liberated whose mind is established in wisdom who acts for the sake of yajna his action is entirely dissolved so one who is acting for the sake of yajna he has accomplished all action and him the knowers of reality call wise even though fully engaged in action he does not act at all and performing the action by the body alone he incurs no sin and even when acting he is not bound and such is the one who acts for the sake of yajna his action is entirely dissolved now let's go to verse 24 brahman is the act of offering brahman the oblation poured by brahman into the fire that is brahman to brahman alone must he go who is fixed in brahman through action i repeat again brahman is the act of offering brahman the oblation poured by brahman into fire that is brahman to brahman alone must he go who is fixed in brahman through action now in the last verse it is said who acts for the sake of yajna his action is entirely dissolved now these words are further explained in this present verse which considers different aspects of action performed by the enlightened man it speaks of that state of consciousness which realizes oneness of existence in all the diversity of action again here we are looking at the different aspects of action performed by the enlightened man and what does it what does it say it speaks of the state of consciousness where one realizes oneness of existence in all the diversity of action now it is important to understand that this verse does not teach that during the performance of a ritual which is yajna this is the ritualistic yajna or any other type of action one should hold in the mind that everything is brahman so it is not about holding something in the mind an idea that everything is brahman the teaching here concerns far deeper levels of life than the surface level of thinking so again it is not on the level of thinking or making a mood that everything is brahman in the mind and here the concern is on the deeper levels of life and it's not just on the surface level so starting from this verse Bhagwan enumerates different aspects of the action of yajna and says that all aspects are brahman so again he bhagwan 
brings out different aspects of action of yagya and says all aspects are brahman certainly an offering is offering oblation is oblation fire is fire and the performer is the performer on the relative on the level of relative life duality prevails everything becomes brahman or everything is brahman only on the level of consciousness of the performer who is established in cosmic consciousness otherwise everything is only in duality so here the enlightened man established in bliss consciousness at all times irrespective of the engagement of the mind and senses in action is intent in brahman while at the same time everything that action entails proceeds naturally at the levels of the senses through the agencies of the gunas so again the enlightened man who is established in bliss consciousness at all times then all his actions with which are you know do being done by the mind and senses are intent on brahman only and then the actions proceed naturally at the level of the senses through the agency of the gunas now we already understand that in the state of cosmic consciousness the mind is infused with being and then no thought word or act can take the mind out of the being here in cosmic consciousness then all actions form an integral part of that consciousness and are therefore appreciated as none other than that consciousness none other than brahman so it is here that all actions lose their duality and become integrated an integral part and become the brahman in this cosmic consciousness now let let us look at the verse again brahman is the act of offering brahman the oblation poured by brahman into fire that is brahman to brahman alone must he go who is fixed in brahman through action and when when bhagavan says fixity in brahman this implies and actually constitutes mastery over action and it is at the same time the fulfillment of action so here fixity in brahman constitutes mastery over action and is at the same time the fulfillment of action and when bhagavan speaks of yagya then he is explaining that the different parts of the action and the various modes of its performance do not leave any trace of bondage for the enlightened man because this enlightened man is ever established in the state of pure consciousness or eternal being and he is simply silent and innocent witness of what is happening through him he is a means through which nature fulfills its purpose of evolution and again his actions are a response to the needs of the time so quite naturally he performs actions which result in every kind of good now let's look at the next phrase to brahman alone must he go i read the verse again brahman is the act of offering brahman the oblation poured by brahman into fire that is brahman to brahman alone must he go who is fixed in brahman through action so here when bhagwan says to brahman alone must he go 
Brahman is the reality which, which embraces both the relative and the absolute fields of life. Again, Brahman is the reality which embraces both the relative and absolute fields of life. So having gained the state of Brahman, then a man has risen to the ultimate reality of existence. So in this state of enlightenment, he has accomplished eternal liberation. And once a man has risen to this state, there is no falling away from it. And that is why Bhagavan says, To Brahman alone must he go, who is fixed in Brahman through action. Again, to Brahman alone must he go, who is fixed in Brahman through action. And here, Bhagavan, when further elaborates on this expression, must he go? Brahman alone must he go. This must he go does not mean that on departing the body or on leaving the body, he does not depart to some other place. The word go here finds in the meaning the fact that with the destruction of the body, the realized man is no longer found as an individual. And when someone is not to be found, he is said, he is gone. Again. So, where then has he gone? In order to explain his position in terms of going, it must be said that he has gone to Brahman. But in fact, there is no question of going for him who is already fixed in Brahman and who has risen to the omnipresent reality. So here he remains what he was already, the Brahman. He remains what he was, Brahman, but without the individual body. Now let's take a look at the next phrase, who is fixed in Brahman through action. Brahman is the act of offering, Brahman the oblation poured by Brahman into fire that is Brahman. To Brahman alone must he go, who is fixed in Brahman through action. So here we are taking the phrase, phrase who is fixed in Brahman through action. So one rises to the state of Brahman in cosmic consciousness. And Brahman is reached by the performance of activity after gaining the state of being through the activity of meditation. The inward activity of meditation followed by the outward activity of daily life is fixed in Brahman. Again, it is clear that through action that one is fixed in Brahman. So this verse not only describes the state of Brahman but also shows a direct way to the realization of Brahman. And how does the realization come through? Through the fixity of the action in Brahman. And this happens when one rises to the state of Brahman in Cosmic Consciousness. Now let's move to the next verse. Some yogis perform yajna merely by worshipping the gods, others by offering the yajna itself into the fire that is Brahman. Again, some yogis perform yajna merely by worshipping the gods, others by offering the yajna itself into the fire that is Brahman. So let us look at the first phrase. Some yogis perform yajna merely by worshipping the gods. Now worshipping the gods is said to be the performance of yajna. Here Bhagavan says that when this worship of gods is offered to Brahman, 
such an offering is also performance of yagya next when it is said how worshiping the gods is offered to brahman and how the offering to brahman is the performance of yagya we'll look into it so again we have seen worshiping the gods is the performance of yagya then worshiping the gods offering to brahman and how the offering of to brahman is the performance of yagya we'll see try to understand this transcending the act of worship is said to be the offering of the worship to brahman and it has the advantage of receiving the blessings of god and at the same time of helping to develop cosmic consciousness now let us look at this in detail we know that it is transcendental self consciousness that develops into cosmic consciousness and in order to achieve cons- cosmic consciousness through worshiping one has to transcend through worshiping so this necessitates entering into the subtle phases of the act of worship and this is most successfully done in a systematic manner by taking the name or form of god and experiencing it in its sub- subtlest state subtler and subtler and subtlest states until the mind transcends the subtlest state and attains transcendental consciousness further those who are highly emotional however may even transcend through an increasing feeling of love for god during the process of making offerings this is very beautiful as to how one can achieve cosmic consciousness through worshiping try to understand this one has to transcend through worshiping and this necessitates entering into the subtle phases of the act of worship and this is most successfully done in a systematic manner by taking the name or form of god and experiencing it in the subtler and subtler states until you transcend the subtler state and attain transcendental consciousness so bhagwan is also saying that those who are highly emotional and who have extreme love for god then they can also transcend with this increasing feeling of love for god when making these offerings now we can say transcending the act of worship is said to be the offering of the worship to brahman here there is an added advantage because you are not only receiving the blessings of god but at the same time it is helping you to develop cosmic consciousness so here by transcending a worshipper arrives at the ultimate fulfillment of yagya and thereby develops cosmic consciousness the state where his every action will prove, prove to be yagya so for the one who is worshiping and who is worshiping the gods his concerns to attain the god will be helpful to evolution and established in his being he will fulfill the purpose of life and this is how transcending the field of yagya to arrive to arrive at the state of brahman also ranks as yagya again transcending the field of yagya to arrive at the state of brahman also ranks as yagya so here we are using this yagya to gain the cosmic consciousness performing this action to gain the cosmic consciousness 
and when the man has gained the cosmic consciousness then all his actions assume the status of yajna because such an action is performed in the state of brahman and it is already on the level of brahman and this is the offering of the yajna itself into the fire that is brahman i will finally read the verse again some yogis perform yajna merely by worshiping the gods others by offering the yajna itself into the fire that is brahman here ends the essence of the verses 24 and 25 chapter 4 the translation and commentary by maharshi ji now i will add a few words what we have discussed now is a li- living reality for me i transcend through all the yajnas and through all the pujas it is difficult when you are actually performing them then it is difficult to transcend but if you are there present in a puja or in a yajna and if you are able to be self referral then you can transcend through the whole puja and you can transcend through the whole yajna and this is how the the consciousness becomes more and more expansive then the transcendental consciousness starts becoming developed into cosmic consciousness and god consciousness so for a devotee by experiencing the subtler and subtler fields of this puja and yajna and just by experiencing the subtler and subtler aspects of the name and form of god and by exp- experiencing the subtler and subtler aspects of the his extreme love and devotion in the heart then one experiences the transcendental consciousness which by participating repeatedly then develops into cosmic consciousness and this has been a part of my tapas when i was in tirumala and himalayas and when the pandits were performing the rudra abhishekam and the yajnas on a regular basis i would simply transcend now this brings a great hope for all the devotees who can understand the importance of transcendence during worshiping and during performing the yajna and during offering to the gods so bringing all this diversity into unity and bringing the duality into unity in the last few days we have been speaking so much about cosmic consciousness and god consciousness and so few people have been asking me how does one experience cosmic consciousness and how is that being developed and how does one know that it is being developed in the previous talks we have discussed about experiencing the glimpses of this pure consciousness when one is meditating you hear many people speaking that the experience of full being is there in the deep sleep state that means the being is fully expressed in the deep sleep state and here the expression is that when you go to sleep then the whole of the ego the mind the senses the body everything is sleeping it is resting and when everything is resting then one remains as the being but here 
It is not a state of awareness because you are not aware of being. So, because in the deep sleep, it is pure tamas. And tamas means inertia. So, in this pure tamas, then there is no faculty of experience or the faculty of experience is not awake. Now, in the process of developing the cosmic consciousness, then the being is growing into full being. Try to understand this. The being which is already there for the sake of you knowing it, it is growing into full being for your own awareness. So here, unless the being is full being, it will not shine forth through the tamas because this is what it is in the sleep. So unless the being is full being, it will not shine forth through the tamas of the sleep because tamas is a state of inertia and it is complete inertia. Because in sleep, it is pure inertia. You might almost say it is like being dead. No faculty of experience is awake. So when the cosmic consciousness is growing, then the experience of inner awareness during sleep is the sure criteria of fullness of being and which is zooming forth in the nature of the mind. So this pure consciousness, it zooms forth the inertia of deep sleep. It is zooming forth through the dead nature of the sleep. So initially, <clears throat> at least in my experience, it was like this, that <clears throat> I would experience this infusion, this awareness, which was coming temporary and then going off and coming temporary and going off again. Because with every experience of transcendental consciousness, then the being is infused in percentage, in a small percentage, maybe 10%, maybe 20%, and it keeps continuously increasing, 30%, 40%, 50%, like that. And where is this being infused? It is in being infused into the nature of the mind. And when it is being infused into the nature of mind, then the effect is shown in the waking state because the mind is functioning. But in deep sleep, it is pure tamas. And so one does not feel this experience. So when this pure consciousness then is also experienced during the deep sleep, that means when it is being zooming into the mind, even during the deep sleep, then one can be without doubt that you have attained the cosmic consciousness. Again, in the beginning, it seems to be temporary, come and go, come and go, then comes a time when it is fully established. And once it is fully established, then it doesn't go back. It is fully established. So when the cosmic consciousness is then established, then one feels naturally the separateness of the self from activity. That means you feel the self and the non-self separate. And this is the experience during the waking state initially. So when it is being established on a permanent basis, then one feels the separateness of this activity during the dreaming state. That means the dream is separate and the self is separate. Then you are also experiencing this non-activity with the deep sleep. You feel the sleep is separate and the self is separate. So this separateness of the self from non-activity 
or separateness from activity is established. This is how it is established in cosmic consciousness. And this is how one experiences the fullness of being in the nature of the mind. And so here the fullness of this integrated state of being is coming into the deep sleep. It is coming into this inertia and one becomes fully awake. Fully awake through the waking, dreaming and sleeping states. So before I arrived to Tirmala, this was my state where I was experiencing the self during the sleep but it was coming and going it was not being sustained and that is when and this went on for a very long time and that is when i realized that my nervous system has to be more rested in order to make this complete and concrete so after i came to tirumala it only took me about two months when it became fully established fully, fully established. That means I never lost this during the 24 hours, during my waking, dreaming, sleeping states. And so then the self and the non-self were completely separate and I become the witness of the, uh, being the self, I become the witness of everything that is happening around me, which is the non-self. All the activities within me and outside me which are not which are not the self is clearly understood and so here the natural non-attachment the natural renunciation happen and this is the beginning of the growth into God consciousness I am eternally grateful to Maharshi Ji for giving me this knowledge which became my experience for enlightenment. And this Bhagavad Gita is invaluable. So here I end. Jai Gurudev, Loka Samasta, Sukhino Bhavantu. Shastra